talking about graphing, um, you know, the concept of velocity. We know that velocity is the displacement over the change in time, correct? So if I want to actually graph this, all right, what does x represent? It, it represents the change in? Displacement. Position. Ah, position. It represents, which is displacement, not distance, right? Because what's the difference between distance and displacement? Displacement is like when you move from one place to another, the distance is like how far you travel? Ish. Ish. Displacement is like magnitude plus direction and distance is like a scalar value. Okay, so one is a vector, one is a scalar. Now, displacement takes into account your starting point or your point of reference. It is the change in your position from your point of reference. So what I mean by that is if this is your starting point right here, okay, and you leave this point and you travel to this destination only to come back and this is your final destination, well, your displacement is actually only this, correct? Because it's the, the actual um, amount of, or your change in position from your original starting point. Whereas distance, it looks just at the magnitude of the amount of space you've moved. So your distance would actually be all of this. Okay, which one is greater in this, in this situation? Your distance is greater. And this is going to become important when we start talking about speed versus velocity later on. Now, when we want to try and graph, because here's the deal, okay? When we're looking at graphing motion, there's always three concepts that we will graph opposite time. And what I mean by that is we're going to look at position as a function of time, velocity as a function of time, and acceleration as a function of time. So if we're looking at URM graphs, okay, we're going to start out with all three graphs, all right? And I'm just going to draw this. So I'm going to say, okay, here, here, and here. Because I want to show you what is happening in all three of these situations for any type of example. All right, so we're doing, this is for URM. Now, if I look at position as a function of time, all right, if I'm talking to you about URM, then I'm telling you that there is no acceleration, correct? Therefore, if there is a positive velocity or a negative velocity, what do we know about that line? What kind of line is it going to be? Meaning? Linear. It's going to be a straight line. Okay? So if I have, uh, let's say I'm here and I have this position as a function of time graph. Now this is position as a function of time. <laughs> We're going to move over here and have velocity as a function of time. And then finally, acceleration as a function of time. Notice how time is always on the x-axis when we're talking about motion graphs. Okay, some of you will make this mistake, hopefully not, but you will actually plot time on the y and uh, position on the x, and it will give you a different slope, which will mean your work is wrong. Okay, so... Make sure that time is always on the x, okay? When we have, the, so let's look at this position as a function of time graph. What is that line? What is that line telling us about what's going on with the position as a function of time? So the more time that passes, the further the position is? Absolutely, but what's the pattern? Constant. It's constant, meaning that for every increment of time, the position changes at that same rate, 
okay? So if I actually had, you know, these little increments here, well, whatever the increment was here, the pattern remains the same. It is constant. There is no acceleration here. So if this is position as a function of time, how would I figure out what my velocity was here? Because here's the deal. In a graph of position as a function of time, the line that's being drawn actually refers to what? What does this line mean? What does it signify? It signifies the velocity. Okay, so this is velocity. So whatever your velocity is, it's whatever that line is. How can I get a numerical value for that velocity? What would I have to calculate? The slope of the line. The slope of the line is the velocity. Now, is this velocity changing? Why not? Because it's a because it's beautiful. Because it's a straight line, right? It's got the, it's got a constant slope. No, I thought that's what you said. Um, oh, uniform. I heard beautiful. I was like, well, it is that. I actually drew a pretty straight line there. Um, now, if let's say I determine my velocity to be five meters per second, why is my unit meters per second for velocity? Why? Nah, look at the graph. Why? Position is always in meters, and time is always in seconds. So, let's say I calculate the slope to be 5 meters per second. Okay, let's say I, I, I figure that out, 5 meters per second. Well, if I look over here at a velocity versus time graph, then... Is my velocity changing? It is not. Therefore, my velocity as a function of time graph is going to be a straight horizontal line for whatever I've calculated that velocity to be. Does that make sense? Can you see the relationship between this line and this line? Okay? My units here meters per second and seconds. Okay, that's a really weird M, but that's okay. Now, here's the deal. What is the slope of my velocity line? It is zero. Why? Because it's constant and I don't have a velocity here. In URM, we don't have a velocity, okay? What does this line in a velocity versus time graph signify? What does it represent? Acceleration. So if I look at this, this guy here, and we'll draw it out in lime green, okay? This line here represents Accelerate. I can't even spell that. Ex really? Ah, oh, you guys. What about this? Is that better? Acceleration. There, I'll abbreviate it. Now, do I have an acceleration? Yes. No, I don't. Why don't I have an acceleration? Because it's beautiful? <laughs> no, but if you look at your velocity time graph, you see, do I have a slope? No. no, I don't. So, what ends up happening in your acceleration as a function of time graph, the acceleration is zero. It's down here. Okay, so Excel, oops versus time. Now, the reason, and another fail-safe here is we look at the actual this times this gives you this unit. 
This times this gives you this unit. Okay, what, is, what are the units for acceleration? Meters per second times Meters. seconds. Okay, well times uh, like one over second. So that's what ends up giving you your meters per second squared. And this is seconds. Okay, so this, the, these three graphs are showing you the same thing. Okay, they're, they're, they're three different versions of the same situation. Does that make sense? Okay? So for URM, velocity is always constant. There is no change. When we actually get to UARM later, okay, we still have our three actual graphs, right? But our position graph, so if we go X over T, V over T, and A over T for UARM, we're going to see this kind of graph here, this kind of graph here, this kind of graph here, okay? Because in acceleration, your position is still changing as a function of time, but it is not changing at the same rate, okay? Your position is actually increasing for every section of time that you're actually going through, okay? This is math. This is, what kind of, what kind of graph is that, right? Okay, that's half of a what? Parabola. That's half of a parabola. That's what acceleration is. Acceleration is your position increasing at a greater rate, at a constantly greater rate for every section of time as time moves on. All right? Math and physics. I mean, math is a language that we use to explain physical phenomena. So you're going to have seen a lot of this. All right, so this, we're going to look at this whole scenario with the three actual graphs again later. But for now, for now, there are no curves. Okay, it is a linear line for your change in position as a function of time. 